because I think I've lost track of the amount of hours I've spent listening to Journey, probably uh, even more than listening to the music in Fallout New Vegas. Uh, <laughs> oh, well, Enon, last question here. What can you tell me about your new uh, Lord of the Rings game, the, uh, the music in the new Lord of the Rings game? First of all, what's the uh, full title of the game, and what should people listen for in Lord of the Rings? Well, Lord of the Rings, War in the North um, is an interesting game because it's all about um, Lord of the Rings from the aspect of the bad guys. Mm -hmm. um, because it sort of like vaguely follows some of the heroes from the movie, mm -hmm. but it is um, all about what's going on with Agandauer, the champions from the North, and mm -hmm. him basically... Uh, on behalf of Sauron, uh, tries to take over. So basically, um, in this game, you need to, A, hold your ground, and then basically fight all the dark forces until you defeat him. Um, this is the, basically, this is the story. Not very complicated, and, um, but there is tons of action there. Um, the music that I wrote there is, you know, it's a, the genre of Lord of the Rings, but it's not as close as you think to the Howard Shore's music. Mm -hmm. It's more action-based. It is orchestral. It is big. Mm -hmm. But it has its own angle. Um, and basically it was recorded at the best environment I could imagine. Um, again, we used one of the best orchestras in the world, the London Philharmonia, and we recorded it probably in one of the best, if not the best, um, recording venue in the world, which is Abbey Road mm -hmm. Studio, um, by John Curlander, who recorded it, and John also recorded all the music for Howard Shore. Mm -hmm. The movies, so he knows a one or two about recording <laughs> scores for Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Uh, um, so we had all the great conditions. Um, soundtrack album is out, so you could definitely check it out. Um, and um, you know, I mean, basically, from now on and from there on, um, I, you know, I'll leave it to um, the listeners to tell what they think. Okay, and can you uh, can you guys give a hint as to what your next big project is? Nope. Nope. <laughs> Journey returns. I can I can hear it now. <laughs> no, we uh, they always put us under uh, very strict NDAs. You know, the game companies just don't want to make any announcement. I can tell you, uh, Enon's got some really cool stuff coming up. Big stuff. Very big. And uh, is there anything that people, that, that, that players, this is the absolute last question. I could talk all day to you guys, but I know you got to get back to the GDC. Is there anything that players of these big games that you've mentioned should listen for in your music? Because maybe you're too busy shooting something or like watching things blow up to maybe hear something important. What? Give us a little secret. Actually, no. <laughs> really, no. We just want you to be immersed in the game. You're playing the game to play the game, not to listen to the music. Mm -hmm. If you happen to like anything from there, then you could just download it, get the soundtrack, and, and then listen to it. Mm -hmm. When you're playing the game, I'm not expecting you to listen to the main music. I expect you to be influenced by the main music, to feel the music, and to basically be helped by the music to get the best experience after they get on the game, period. Well, that's an yeah, uh, awesome answer. <laughs> yeah, it's just the intent of the music is to augment the objective of the game developer. And part of that objective is to ap create absolutely immersive relation engagement uh, between the player and the game. Nothing else exists. You know, mm -hmm. so. All right. Well, so there. Well, thank you. And uh, Bob, is there anything else you'd like to say about your company? Oh, we're having a lot of fun. I love <laughs> the guy. I, I'm, you know, I'm really serious. My whole life uh, 
has been in the music business, and since I can't sing, dance, or play, <laughs> all I can hope to do is serve as some sort of champion on behalf of people in the music industry. Mm -hmm. I've been at the record for 30 some years, and then uh, since 1992 or 95, I can't remember, been doing it in the game industry. But what I enjoy most is a uh, quick story which will lead to my answer. When I was 15, I threw a dance. Mm -hmm. uh, Cleveland, Ohio, there was not any place to go dance live to rock and roll music. So I brought a band in from Erie, PA. I threw a dance. And I looked at the band, and they were having a great time. And they were having a great time. Mm -hmm. And I thought to myself, wow, I did this. Everybody's having a great time. That's because of the music. I think I will be involved in music for the rest of my life. And what I see now, again, going reflecting on that first experience, is I see the gamers having a great time. I go to some of these places where they have a game competition. Mm -hmm. See the gamers having a great time. Occasional conversation. Wow, Enon's great. Tom Salt is great. You know, so on and so forth. The composers' names, you know. I'll hear from the audio directors and the video game developers saying, man, Enon made our game bigger and better than we thought it was in the first place. And then, of course, I'll see the composers enjoying their life from the standpoint of not even working, but just fulfilling the passion that they have in life, and that is to make music. So, in essence, I'm just, all I'm doing is repeat, repeating <laughs> that original vision that I had when I was 15. Everybody's having a great time, and it's all about music, and I have been blessed to have the opportunity to participate in some small fashion to bring all that to life. So, you are the world's best party planner. Yeah. <laughs> you, could, you could say so. <laughs> yeah. Well, I will uh, th say thank you very much, guys. I know you got to get back to the GDC, and best of luck, Enon, with all your future projects, and best of luck to you, Bob, and I, I hope to hear from you guys about the next Journey game. Yeah, you know, I, I will tell Steve what you said, and I'm telling you, <laughs> I had planned on bringing that up to him, but I'll, I'll validate my concept with your words, and one way or the other, we'll, we'll give you a call. You can ask Steve about <laughs> How do you feel about having been in? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Well, and, uh, yeah, so we'll have a good time. I, I can already envision the packaging because you could sell uh, the album. On, with, you could have a giant box with the vinyl record. That's obviously a pretty big box. Uh, and, and you could package a reprint of Journey Escape for the Atari 2600 for the, uh, you know, for the serious audience out there and also uh, make some more money off the original investment. And then you could package right right on top of this big box set the uh, the new game. So it would be like wow. the size of a record. It would have two different video games and contain the vinyl. Wow, you are a marketing man. That's well. This, I just I'm just telling you what I would buy. I mean, this is this is what yeah, I but would I mean, want. It, yeah, but it, a lot of people wouldn't. You you have a very good marketing mind. <laughs> well, thank you. I'll That's take that cool. as a compliment. Once again, a big thank you for taking the time out of your day to speak with us at Classic Game Room, Enon Zor, Bob Rice, and go and buy all their games, including Journey Escape. You know what to do. Thanks again, guys, and have fun at GDC. Thank right. you. Thank and, you. And um, hi to all our uh, fans.